Life Loss Estimation Warning Delay and Protective Action Initiation What is the single greatest source of natural variability when estimating life loss? LifeSim can be used for hydraulic data, structure, and warning and evacuation. What are consequences? Consequence is a negative outcome of a specific flood event. To perform a risk assessment, you will need to estimate consequences for a range of events. We focus on direct consequences. Direct life loss is that caused from drowning or being in a structure that collapses. Estimates do not include indirect life loss, such as accidents that occur during evacuation, stress to vulnerable populations, nursing homes, hospitals. Direct economic damage is really damage to structures, contents, and vehicles, as well as cleanup costs and lost benefits, hydropower, water supply. Indirect economic damage, also known as regional damage. You've all seen this. Risk is a function of the hazard, the performance of the flood defense infrastructure, and the impacts to life, structures, infrastructure, and the environment, which we call consequences. Part of risk management is consequence management. Under scalable concept, talk about initial characterization needing to be conservative, while others are best estimates. Need to build the case for consequences as rigorously as we do for probability. Consider this. Why do we go through the effort to understand potential issues with performance of our infrastructure? 1. To determine where to invest resources with the ultimate goal of reducing the likelihood of flooding and therefore reducing risk, likelihood of something bad happening. And 2. To determine how to invest those resources to fix the problem, need to understand the issue before we can fix it. So, if our ultimate goal is to manage risk, less damage less often, fewer people losing their life, then we must embrace both likelihood management and consequence management. To effectively manage consequences, specifically loss of life, we need to understand all the important aspects of what causes someone to lose their life during a flood. Relying on generalized empirical approaches that lump important aspects into a couple parameters to understand the potential for loss of life may give us a feel for the potential magnitude of life loss, but they will not provide us with enough understanding to effectively manage those consequences. Our goals are to develop quantitative approaches to estimate human behavior for life loss estimation, develop methods to measure local community behavior time estimates for warning issuance, diffusion, and protective action initiation for emergency incidents, and to prepare a local community guidebook to inform emergency managers about social, scientific, and evidence-based best practices. Here are some acknowledgments. This graph shows the redistribution of people. An imminent hazard is a time when something has definitely gone wrong. An imminent hazard ID is a time when you are convinced that something is going to go wrong and you initiate action, evacuation. This graph is an example of an imminent hazard ID. The warning and mobilization timeline is shown here. This is the warning delay flowchart for primary, secondary, and tertiary. This table shows warning threat triggers. Notice the warning issuance delay curves in this graph. This graph shows warning issuance delay curves. This is an example flowchart for the warning delay Oroville.
This graph shows warning delay time for the likelihood of warning issuance delay and the time after receiving the warning in minutes. Understand your community. Warning channels need to be tailored to population at risk. There is no magic bullet. This flowchart shows warning diffusion for primary, secondary, and tertiary. This table shows warning diffusion channels. The graph here shows the percentage of PAR that has received the warning and the time after warning initiation in minutes. This table is the Oroville evacuation message received by channel summary. This shows the warning and mobilization timeline. Understand your community. Warning channels need to be tailored to population at risk. There is no magic bullet. The flowchart here shows the proactive action initiation timeline. The single most important thing that an emergency manager can do to motivate effective public protective action is to provide the best emergency messages possible. Be specific and clear in your message style. Here are some examples of each. This is an example message. Here is another example message. This graph shows protective action initiation. The graph shows combined warning and PAI curve with the proactive action initiated percentage and time after warning issuance in minutes. Utilize the research in support of the dam and levy safety programs, including the elicitation guide. This is an example of interview schedule and scoring. The number of people that make the decision to issue a warning is ideally three or fewer. This table shows an example of warning diffusion. The table shows an example of protective action initiation. Another resource is the Community Planning Guidebook. Mythbusters Game. Asking the public to evacuate for a flood emergency that does not ultimately occur will reduce compliance next time. Busted. Traffic accidents increase during mass evacuations. Busted. Traffic accidents decrease because traffic is moving at slower speeds, generally in a single direction, and people are more cautious and more considerate. Here are some more resources, white paper examples, and the elicitation guide. Check on learning. Take time to answer the question. Check on learning. Take time to answer the question. Check on learning. Take time to answer the question.
Check on learning. Take time to answer the question. Check on learning. Take time to answer the question. Here is some more information.